So today, as uh, Christopher say, I will uh, be bas basic, uh, and uh, it's uh, maybe you know all this, but it's important to repeat and repeat some uh, basic stuff because I think uh, to measure the ventricles, to have a look at the midline, uh, to know the maturation of uh, the brain, just uh, just facing the cilian fissure and looking at the cilian fissure. It's, uh, for me, very important. And uh, I think that uh, even in, uh, on Monday, I will uh, give you uh, a short uh, lecture about uh, three uh, difficult cases. And uh, I think it's good for experts to, to see this case. Today, uh, it's uh, the basic, but you need the basic to go to the expertise uh, on Monday. So if you know all this, on Monday it will be simpler. So. Uh, for sure, uh, we'll speak about uh, the ventricle and how to measure the ventricle. Uh, we'll uh, go to uh, the midline and uh, see the cavum septum pellicidae. But more than that, we'll see the anterior complex. And um, we'll finish with the cilian fissure before uh, a short life can. So uh, you know that uh, uh, we published uh, an article in 09 about uh, how to standardize the, uh, this procedure. Of about the measurements of the ventricle. Why? Because you know that in the guidelines of uh, the ESOG, um, the lateral ventricle is an important uh, structure to look at because ventricular migraine is the main finding for uh, CNS pathologies and diagnosis. And uh, in fact, um, how you measure the ventricle? Um, in uh, most people say, yes, it's very difficult. Uh, diffi it's easy to measure the ventricle. Uh, you have an axial plane, you look at the thalami, and uh, it's simple. But in fact, this was published in uh, 1988. Uh, and uh, two uh, years after that, there was this publication showing that uh, we can be off axial plane. We can have uh, not a good uh, choice of the ventricular border. Uh, it can be angulated, uh, and all this uh, lead to false positive uh, results. Um, it's uh, like the main um, main question is when you have a ventricle which is around 20, oh sorry, uh, around 10 millimeters, and you call this a borderline ventricular megaly. Um, the main uh, issue is to know if there is ventricular megaly or not. This is uh, illustrated in this case. This patient was referred uh, in our lab for a uh, borderline ventricular migraine. And we can have 10.8, 12. But if you measure accurately, we are at 9. And there is no ventricular migraine. Uh, a good example is uh, this uh, zucchini. When you want to cut slices of zucchini, uh, you can do it in orthogonal plane. Uh, and perpendicular to the zucchini. And you have this slider. But if you are off uh, and a little bit oblique, you will get this slice. And this, the uh, second one, is larger than the first slide. And it's the exactly the same thing. And it's why we publish this score. Um, the important thing is to be strictly axial, to be at the good level, and to know where is the atrium. And there is a question about placement of the caliper and uh, image size. But the three main criteria uh, are the uh, three first uh, ones. The first ones, what means strict? And O can be sure that I'm strict. And uh, your midline should be perpendicular to the ultrasound beam. This is very important. I, I will show you how to do that uh, during the live scan. And when you have the line, uh, midline perpendicular, this midline should be at equal distance from the proximal and distal cavalier margins. That means you are uh, this, the midline is orthogonal to the beam, and D is equal to D prime. This is very important. So in that case, you have orthogonal slides, and you know the main question is at which level should we cut the zucchini? And um, some people say uh, you should use the talamai. Um, in fact, the best thing is to have two landmarks, one anterior and one posterior. 
The anterior one can be the cavum septum pellicidae, and it can be also the fornix colon. And the posterior landmark is the fluid field space uh, of the ambient cisterna. He, this is the triangular space of the ambient cisterna, which is here. It's subarctic spaces. And this is either the cavum pellicidae, and here it's the fornix colon. And this is much more accurate than the thalami. If you are strict at a good level, you have to locate the atrium, or to locate the atrium. If you think about the plexus, it's very difficult, in fact. And anatomy suggests that the atrium is facing the internal parieto-occipital sulcus. That means that glomus is easy to identify, but this location will change depending on the shape of the plexus choroid and on the degree of dilatation of the ventricle. So look at the internal parietoxypal sulcus. It's the definition of the atrium. It's depicted on the inner border of the hemisphere. And it's small depression, and it becomes a bit deeper at the end of the pregnancy. This is here, this small depression here. And you see, you measure, but in this case, you are at the level of the plexus choroid. But here, you see, you are far away from the plexus, and you see the depression with the arrow, you are exactly at the atrium. And when you are uh, in the third trimester, this sulcus fissure becomes deeper, and you should measure at the deepest part of the fissure. This patient was referred for uh, amniocentesis, uh, for uh, ventriculomegaly, but if you look at uh, the image, in fact, it's uh, not orthogonal, uh, and the sulcus is here. And in fact, it's the occipital horn. And uh, very often, in the second part of the pregnancy, there is a sort of uh, uh, dilatation, small slight dilatation of the occipital horn, and it could be, uh, in fact, diagnosed as a ventriculomegaly, and it's just a variant. And if you measure carefully, in fact, there is no ventriculomegaly at all. So how to measure and how to place the calipers? You know it's on-to-on, -on, orthogonal to the ventricular wall. And you should have a good uh, magnification and to see the proximal and distal calvary margins and you should avoid excessive or low magnification. The main interest uh, is to improve your reliability for measurements which are close to 10 millimeters, and in improve also the reliability of the follow-up, especially if several examinations are performed by different operators. Let's move to the anterior complex. You know that cavum septum pellicidae is a very important, and it's a good landmark to uh, diagnose midline anomalies. Why is it uh, this structure which has been uh, chosen for uh, midline analysis? Because it's easy to identify, but and you should visualize, uh, visualize this uh, structure between 18 and 37 weeks. But uh, in many conditions uh, involving the midline, this uh, CSP will be not present in holoprosent cephaly in complete agenesis of the corpus callosum, and you may also have absence of the cavum septum pellicidae when you have a severe hydrocephalus because of a bad automatic insult, skidencephaly because of ischemia, and you may have congenital absence of the cavum septum pellicidae, which is an agenesis, and in some cases, a few cases, related to septum optic dysplasia. But in our casuistic, we have cases of false image of CSP. As in this case, I will show you two images. One is a false image, one is a real CSP. You, for sure, for you, the CSP is here. This is not the CSP, because in this case, you have a complete agenesis of the corpus callosum. And you know, sometimes, uh, there is dilatation of an ascension of the third ventricle, which may mimic a CSP. So we published in uh, all 13 the fact that we should improve our detection and uh, looking at the anterior complex. 
This is this. This is, in fact, a complex formed by the carbon septum pellucidi, which is here on sagittal view and axial view. And on each side, there is a frontal horn. It can be interesting for you if you look at the uh, entire complex to see that the two horns are symmetric. You know that uh, for the ventricle measurements, it's sometimes difficult to see the proximal uh, ventricle. If you look at the symmetry, it can be a good indicator that there is no uh, dilatation uh, on the uh, ventricle, which is on the proximal um, hemisphere. Now, you here you have the genu of the corpus callosum. You see the genu is here, and you have just above the genu the pericalosal sulcus, which is here. And this looks like an anchor. And you see the base of the anchor here is the pericalosal sulcus, and the arm of the anchor is the anthermic fissure. Is it interesting to see this anthermic fissure? Uh, yes, because we have uh, report that uh, in some cases there is a distortion of the anterior part of the anthermic fissure. And in that case, it can be an indicator of midline anomalies, but also or more complex CNS anomalies. But we have two cases in the, uh, this publication, and uh, now we have five cases like that, with uh, a very strange aspect of uh, the anthermic fissure, but with normal baby. So it's just a feature, it's not a pathology. So look at that, and if you have something which is distorted like that, think about the midline, think to see carefully and scrutinize the brain, but if there is nothing else, uh, the baby can do it doing well, as in uh, absence of the carbon septum pellucidi. So for midline analysis, look at the entire complex, and after, to finish, the cilian fissure. For me, it's the most important part. I put my probe, I look at the cilian fissure. And the cilian fissure is not seated uh, in the guidelines. But you see, uh, on the diagram here, you see the cilian fissure. The cilian fissure is here, under your eyes. So look at the cilian fissure. And why do you have to look at the cilian fissure? Because from my point of view, to have a look at all the gyration is a wait of time because uh, there is inter individual variation uh, for uh, secondary sulci and the sylvian fissure is very, very simple. You have this under your eyes and look at the posterior part of the uh, uh, sylvian fissure. This is the insula, this is the temporal lobe, and look at this part. At 22 weeks, it will be 45 degrees, it will be square at 24 weeks, and after that, the temporal lobe will recover the alt part of the insula, like this, this, and this. At 32, it will be in the middle. Half the way at 28, a quarter of the way at 26, and square at 24. This, this, this. You may say it's Difficult. You may uh, have an other indicator between 26 and 28. You see the difference here for sure, but look here. There is one more sulcus, which is the superior uh, temporal sulcus, which appears around 27. So with all this, you, you can uh, have an idea of the maturation of the brain uh, with a uh, precision of 10 days, as we published uh, in 08. So this is open angle at 22, 45 angle at 22, uh, so, so, uh, 20, uh, 25 at 22, 24, 90, and the uh, covering of the uh, posterior part of the insula. So this is the case. Uh, it's the first ultrasound. Uh, and uh, we get this biometry, head circumference 28, uh, abdominal 26, femur 26. And the question is, is it a patient at 26 with a uh, huge head or a patient at 28 
with a, a IGR, what do you think? 26, for sure it's 26. And you can look also, if you are very clever, you go a little up, and you have the central sulcus, which appear around 26, and this very small depression at 26, which becomes a bit deeper uh, uh, later in the pregnancy. And you can also look at the DTC, and you know the DTC, uh, or the TCD, sorry, uh, it's uh, uh, 28 or 29, around 26, so you are right, it was 26. And this is very useful, and each day I do that, I put my probe and I just see if the maturation of the brain is consistent with the gestational age. In some cases, this patient was referred for us for isolated ventricular megaly. But if you look at the cilian fissure, right away you say it's not isolated. You see? Because this is widely open, it's open like a 20, 20 weeks uh, pregnancy. So this is uh, not consistent with something normal. And we did an MR, and on MR, you see, you have exactly the same shape. But you see also that the cortical ribbon is undulated, and this is a diffuse polymicrogyria. So I think it's very simple, very basic. You may uh, have uh, uh, listened to that many times, but I think it's very important to repeat, repeat, and repeat because it's uh, uh, the routine. So we'll do that uh, on the live scan. Th thank you. I have two patients. Uh, the first thing is that you don't know the just at her age, and I will try to do uh, a precise uh, analysis of the filament fissure because I don't emphasize uh, the uh, the way of doing that and the landmarks. The zone marks is the ambient cisterna, but entirely you should be on the fornix. And we'll do that. Maybe uh, we should discuss a little bit about uh, how doing that in a strict axial plane or strict plane, general split splitting. You see, you are on uh, carbon symptom PCD, and here you are on the CSP. Okay. Um, what do you think? Is 24 degrees or it is square? Or is it in the middle? I came back. You have a precision of one week. So you would say 24. I, I, I repeat. Uh, we go. You know, uh, where is the, the pointer? Uh, it should be uh, 24 degrees at 22. Square at 24. And the insula will be recovered by the temporal lobe after that. So here, you think it's 20, uh, 45 degrees or orthogonal, or between the two? I think for me it's between the two. And the patient is at 23. So for us, <laughs> it's good to know that uh, she's at 23 for sure. And uh, just to, to show you something, um, you see, when I, I do my scanning, uh, I look at you, but uh, I don't have to look at uh, the, the screen or to the patient. And you see the midline is really orthogonal, okay? So when I do that, I have just to turn my, uh, my hand like this. And if I do that, I will be on the corner view, okay? So uh, you have my hand here. Okay, so you see uh, on my hand, this is this axial. I just have to turn like this, this coronal, and th there is two, in fact, wall 
of the house. One here, one here. And if you want to put the, the roof, the roof is here. The, the roof should be here. And if the roof is here, you see, it's very, very simple to, to obtain up. I have to push a little bit because she's not, uh, So we'll do the sagittal plane after that. So uh, just to uh, remind you that the uh, midline should be orthogonal to uh, the beam. And uh, when you scan from top to down, you see the midline stay in the midline. And this is very important. And the midline is at equal distance from the two uh, volts. And um, if you want to, um, to know where you have to uh, measure, we say that it's important to have two landmarks. Here you see clearly that you have where the, OK, thank you. This is V shape with sub octet spaces, which is the ambient cisterna. And here, this is here, the four next column. And just above, you have the cavum septum pellicidae. OK? And you see that the cavum septum pellicidae, the AP diameter should be larger than the transverse diameter. Because if the AP diameter is shorter than the transverse, you may deal with callosal degenesis. So now uh, you know that you have to measure the ventricle, and you know that you have a small depression, and I will show you here. This is, in that case, uh, it's not worthwhile to measure the ventricle because uh, it's very, uh, very thin, but if you have to measure, you see that the depression is here. So you measure from here to, to here. OK? If you have any question, uh, feel free to, to ask. So uh, you see that uh, you see ventricle. Um, it can be interesting to see also this. What is this? Uh, you see one line and one line is the third ventricle. And between the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle, there is the aqueduct. And you see how clearly you see the aqueduct. You see this, the lumen of the aqueduct here, you see? And in fact, we can do that in an orthogonal view to, sh to show you the aqueduct. And you see the aqueduct. It's going from the third ventricle. And here, you have the lumen of the aqueduct, OK? So uh, now we can go very far here. There is no sulcus. And this is the central sulcus, which appear around 26. And we are 23. There is a smooth cortex at this level, which is completely normal. But you know, uh, I think for me, it's very important to do that in a perfect uh, axial plane. You see, it's like a CT scan. And um, when we do MR, we do all this with series of axial plane. If I give you uh, this, we we'll say, no, it's not a good MR. But why? When we are scanning, we are not doing exactly the same thing. If we are precise with MR, we should be precise with ultrasound. You see that in that case, you don't see the proximal hemisphere. Sometimes it's e it can be useful to see this hemisphere. And in you can do this. I will try to, to do that for you. OK. Here, you see the hemisphere. So this can be interesting. You see, you are completely oblique. So I was, if you see my, uh, my hand, I was like that. And I will push the, my, uh, my probe close to the belly of the patient. And I can have a look at the, hemis the hemisphere, the proximal hemisphere. It's not to measure, because I'm completely um, oblique. But it can be, in fact, very interesting to look 
that the ventricle wall is smooth, that there is no ecogenic content within the ventricle, which can suggest that there is intramortical hemorrhage, that there is no cyst here. In CMV, there can be cyst. So this is a useful view when you want to have uh, an idea of the integrity of the proximal hemisphere. Um, you see, in that case, the subarchal space are uh, really large. And because of that, you see something which is not uh, always seen. What, what that and that? You know, there is two around structure. I will show you this. You see? It's a chiasma, yes, it's a chiasma, and you see the two opt optic nerve coming here and joining at the chiasma. You see? Oh, fine, uh, is the image that case? So we may, uh, on the axial plane, do you have any question? <coughs> Feel free to, to ask, and there is a, uh, you see, uh, for the um, posterior fossa, you, you see clearly uh, the fourth ventricle, which is here. Here. You see the ecogenicity of the pyramids, and you see the two hemispheres, and you see that the uh, fourth ventricle, the AP diameter, is superior to the transverse diameter. If the AP diameter is longer than the transverse diameter, and you have uh, exactly What's your diagnosis? So, uh, yes. Joubert syndrome, yes. So each time you have a polydactyly or ecogenic kinase, look uh, at the fourth ventricle to be sure that it's normal if you see that the AP diameter is longer than the transverse diameter. You have elongation of the peduncle in a case of molar tooth, si molar tooth sign and it's a Jobert syndrome, okay? So, uh, if you have uh, something wrong with the posterior fossa, you have to go to a sagittal view. So, this is it's a little bit tricky in, in that case, because, it, but, but you, you see here? Okay. This is the dermis, okay? You see a perfect dermis. And you may see also uh, this, which is the aqueduct, okay? And you have, you see, here, the pons, the bulb of the pons. Uh, you have the tantorium, which is here. And if you look, the ecogenicity of the vermis is greater than the hemispheres. If you go at 26 from one size to the other, and there is no ecogenicity of the pyramids. And the TCD is a little bit decreased. What's your diagnosis? You go, you go from one side, hypoechoic, hypoechoic, no ecogenicity in the middle, and the TCD is a little bit decreased. Okay. Yes, thrombocephalosynapsis, yes. They are very clever. Okay, so, uh, what, uh, just ask me a question, I can uh, continue like that. If you, uh, if you suspect that the, the proximal ventricle is enlarged, how you measure it? Uh, this is a good question, because uh, it's very difficult to be, uh, you can do it on coronal view. You can try to, um, to do a coronal, but uh, you see in that case, it will be difficult to do a coronal view. Even uh, if I try like that, uh, I cannot turn the baby. Um, I can try to have a look like this. I know that I'm a little bit oblique, okay? Uh, so if you know that you are oblique, you know that you will increase the measurements. If you are below 10 millimeters, you be sure that there is no problem. The fact is, when you are dealing with maybe there is a ventricular megaly in the proximal hemisphere, you may do that to have a look and to be sure. But when you do that, you do an axial and oblique view. So in that case, you are not orthogonal, but you are in fact oblique. So in, in many cases, when um, uh, some uh, very good um, 
guys want to, to be sure that there is no ventricular release, try to see the ventricle. Do that, yes, yes, uh, I see the ventricle. Yes, I see the ventricle. And uh, it's a borderline ventricular migraine. But it's just, uh, in fact, a false image uh, because of an uh, oblique uh, image. Okay? Um, okay. I will mean time. I, I can move to the other patients, maybe. <coughs> if you want, I can move because I don't want to press too, too much for the midline. And uh, we can continue with uh, the midline for with the, the other patient, yes. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I, I will change, thank you. So, so same question. Uh, you don't know the just as soon as age, and we'll try to have a quick look at the sedent fissure. Thank you so much. <coughs> mm. Okay, hello. Uh, you see, um, it's, it can be tricky. Yeah. Up, uh, it's here, this one. This is the uh, ancilla, middle of the ancilla, here, all the way. Uh, and if you look carefully here, I will talk. You see, you begin to see this. You see the very small depression. So uh, at the way, maybe a little bit. So at, uh, at the way, it's 28. A quarter of the way, 26. The, the wall depression appears around 27. And she's between 26 and 27. So uh, you see, uh, you don't need to be too precise. But if it's fit for you with uh, one week or one, in, uh, one and a half, it will be perfect. When there is a delay of two weeks, I uh, begin to be of concern about uh, cortical disorders of the delay of the maturation. Okay, um, you see that uh, you see clearly uh, the fourth ventricle here. You see also the optic chiasma here and the optic nerve, and um, we have to to have a look. At the midline. I try to have a good. Okay. Not too bad. Not this is this is better. But you see, according to the way of scanning, you can have a good uh, genius of the corpus colon. Up. Okay, you see the vermis, clear, uh, clearly the vermis. You have the corpus callosum, but I want just to, uh, to see the most anterior part of the corpus callosum because here you see the genuine, which is here, and you see the splenium. So when, but we are not on orthogonal, let me try to, to do my best for you. Sometimes it's it's a real life, so mm. you see how, f how far I'm, I am with my phone in the belly of the patient. Up. Yes, I, it's it's better. Yeah. You see here that uh, you see all the parts of um, the corpus callosum. You see the rostrum, the genio, the body, and uh, sorry, the uh, rostrum, the genio, uh, the body, and the splenium. And when you measure it, you know around 
22, it will be 22, and this is okay. So, uh, and at uh, 32, it will be 39, uh, uh, 40. So this is a, a good measurement for a patient at 26. And okay. To be sure that you are really in the middle, you should have the vermis and the nasal bone. So it's, I'm not completely perfect, but uh, almost. Um, okay. This is okay. And here you see clearly the cavum septum pellicidae here, and here the cavum vergae. Here you see the brainstem. And if here we put, uh, yes, my, uh, my focal, yes, to the brainstem, okay, you see the vermis, and you see that the brainstem is a little bit uh, tricky to, uh, to an analyze because the anterior part of the brainstem here is, here the pons, is more echogenic than the posterior bras. So to have a good measurement of the brainstem using ultrasound, it may be very tricky, and we don't have this with MR. So I prefer to measure the brainstem on uh, my MR compared to ultrasound, uh, because I do all the measurements on ultrasound, except for the brainstem, which is more difficult to, to get uh, with ultrasound due to, uh, you see here, you, you see clearly that the pons here is more echogenic. And if you have to measure, uh, it's difficult to know if uh, I have to go from here, here, to that. So I prefer to measure with them all. Okay, but to measure the vermis high, it's, uh, it's easy. Okay, um, so any question? Up. Here, if we go up, you see there is this small depression, which is here, around 26, which is the central sulcus. So if you look at the brain, you are sure that the maturation if, so if you look uh, now at, uh, at the TCD, TCD, 26, it should be uh, 29, uh, so, uh, and uh, we measure it, this one. Okay. Uh, is it? Okay, 29. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, if you have a corpus callosus at Genesis, and you want to be sure it's isolated, you have to be sure that the maturation of the brain is, uh, uh, in fact, consistent with the uh, gestational age. And this is the case here. Okay. Um, what else do you want to, to know? Um, you see the foliation clearly here. And I don't know why, but when I have to measure uh, the TCD late in the pregnancy, I found that it was easier to see on the coronal view than on the uh, axial view. And you see uh, here uh, clearly the foliation. You see the foliation also here. The foliation is transverse. There is some pathologies, uh, especially in uh, CMV infection. You have, uh, have degenesis of the foliation, with foliation which is, uh, in fact, uh, all, not horizontal, but vertical. And it leads to uh, irregular aspect of the border of uh, the, of the hemispheres. Okay, uh, you know that, uh, uh, what's his name from uh, Chile, uh, described uh, the posture complex. Uh, you know the anterior complex, we speak about the anterior complex, which is, oh, I, I haven't shown you the anterior complex, it's here. You see, we, uh, can you uh, magnify a little bit? Uh, is this one? Okay, okay, perfect. Here, the cavum septum pellicidae, the genu, here, the pericolosal fissure, which is difficult to see, and the anthermic fissure, we'll do that here, maybe the anchor is more visible here, okay? And you can do that also uh, in a coronal view. 
And in coronal view, you, it's some, sometimes more evident. You see that you see the carbon septum felicity here. You have uh, here the fibers of the corpus callosum, and here the entering fissure with the pericolous sulcus. Okay, so we can go from here to here. And uh, it can be interesting to do that. Uh, if you cannot do a, a sagittal view, you can do a uh, coronal view just to be sure that uh, your uh, corpus callosum is uh, well identified. But in that case, you cannot measure the uh, length of the corpus callosum. But in the in routine, it's not useful to, to measure the length. Okay. No, no question. You see, at that time, that's uh, Dr. Gibo. Yes. Could you please show us how can you measure the posterior fossil landmarks uh, in sagittal plane in the suspicion of Blake Blake Blake's post? Okay. Um, so, when there is a Blake's post cyst, uh, I will try to be sure that uh, my vermis is complete or not. So. Um, this is, yes, it's too, too, too bad, but I, I hope it is better. You see, you see when, you know, when you are not strictly on the vermis, it's very easy to see because it's less ecogenic. Here, I'm sure that I'm on the vermis. And uh, what I want to know is to be sure that uh, the high of the vermis is uh, good. I know that 28, it should be uh, 16, so we will be between uh, uh, around uh, 14 or 50, uh, 15. Okay, and uh, it's okay. We have a good awareness for this age. Uh, the main concern is when there is a cyst and the big post cyst, sometimes there is, in fact, compression of the awareness. And in that case, sometimes, the I could be just d decreased because of the fan mass effect. So in that case, it can be interesting to try to have a good view of the vermis and try to, uh, to see the primary fissure, which is a little bit tricky to, to see in that case. But here, you see the primary fissure, which is, up, which, which is here. You see this fissure? This is the primary fissure. I will show you uh, maybe a bit better. Uh, uh. Yeah, ah, it's better here because I think she's here. Up, sorry, which which is here, and uh, so it's a landmark which can be interesting. When to be sure that, uh, uh, and you can do that either this way or this way, but uh, by the posterior front tunnel, it. Uh, it's easier to have a better visualization of, uh, of the vermis, okay? And you see also the first ventricle. You see uh, the chiasma, you see the brainstem. Okay, and you see the aqueduct just above the vermis, okay? Another question? Don't hesitate uh, to ask if you. Mr. Gibo, is possible to see for the charge syndrome? Uh, yes. Um, the frontal uh, sulk, the narinian sulk, and the uh, ear, internal ear. Uh, yes, it's very difficult to see at this age of pregnancy because uh, at 26, it's uh, not possible. So the inner ear will be, uh, in fact, uh, uh, identified by uh, MR at, uh, at this age of pregnancy. Uh, I'm glad that, that uh, you asked this question, and I'm glad that the patient is 26, because for me it's very difficult to see with ultrasound, and I'm not really sure I, I, to, to see it uh, carefully, so I prefer to have a good view of uh, the internal uh, structures of the, of the ear uh, using MR compared to ultrasound. You can also uh, try to, uh, to see the olfactory sulci, uh, but uh, in fact, uh, at 26, it's very difficult to see 
there will be some annotation here, but there is at 26 there is no no way to see. Maybe it will be here, but uh, I don't trust uh, really um, ultrasound because in short syndrome you know that uh, in uh, many cases, in most of the cases, you have uh, abnormalities of the olfactory structure, but it can uh, involve the sulci, but the sulci can be normal with absence of bulb, and it can be unilateral or bilateral. So if you, you have to see the two sulci and the bulbs on the two sides to be sure that all is normal. To do that with MR, uh, with ultrasound, for me it's impossible. So uh, you can see one or two, but you will not see the bulb, and if you see two sulci, you can have a charge without any bulbs, and this is not uh, identified with uh, ultrasound, but only with MR. Okay. Can you show the measurement for external hydrocephalus? For, sorry. For? For external hydrocephalus. Ah, external hydrocephalus. You, you, uh, this is a <laughs> very good question. Uh, in fact, uh, when you have to think about uh, external hydrocephalus, I prefer the term uh, benign familial macrocephaly or uh, uh, benign macrocephaly. Because when you say hydrocephalus for the parents, uh, they go to internet, and uh, uh, even it's inter external uh, hydrocephalus, uh, they will be in concern. So you say, I, we, we, uh, when you say benign macrocephaly, uh, uh, it will be uh, better. And in that case, in fact, uh, you are dealing with a baby with a large head, uh, with um, slide ventriculomegaly, and the main difficulty is to have a, an idea of how the perisable space look in the normal condition. So if you don't have a look each time at the perisable spaces, you will never know how they look, but it's normal. And uh, you see here, you see uh, the perisable spaces, and we have no norms. When we do um, transfrontalar uh, ultrasound in neonate, we know that uh, we have to measure the uh, parcel space at the level of the anthermic fissure. And we have norms for the uh, anthermic fissure space. When it's more than six or seven millimeters, you may deal with um, benign macrocephaly. But in the, post in the prenatal period, we have no norms. So it's a very subjective uh, assessment. Is yeah, normal or not normal? So when there is no parasol spaces, uh, it's very easy. You know that um, in uh, obstructive hydrocephalus, the parasol spaces will disappear. Uh, they will increase in uh, two conditions, when there is benign macrocephaly, and uh, they will decrease also with microcephaly, when there is a clastic event which reduces the volume of uh, the, uh, say the, the brain. In CMV, in very uh, severe CMV, you have microcephaly and very large parasol spaces. So parasol spaces is a very good clue to understand when you have a ventriculomegaly, when you have a macrocephaly or a microcephaly to have an idea of the etiology of uh, the features. So uh, the other way of saying that, when you have macrocephaly and a ventricle around uh, 14 millimeters, is it uh, because of obstruction or is it because it's a benign macrocephaly? So, so large head, large ventricle, and you are uh, hesitating between obstruction or benign macrocephaly. Look at the parcel spaces. If they, are, you, they look enlarged, you are in the familial benign microcephaly, which is uh, really rare, but is there reduced? You are in an obstruction pattern. So this is uh, something which is uh, very in interesting to look at, but remain subjective. Okay. 
Okay, so. I, I think we have to... Okay, give him a great applause. This was... Uh, <laughs> thank you.